What do you do when you find out your boyfriend hooked up with their friend overnight? We'll get into that in a bit, but first, I, 21-year-old male, found out my husband, 21-year-old male, is using Grindr. We've been together for about six years, married for two. We were watching TikToks the other night and he switched apps. One app that was open was the App Store, and the recent search was Grindr. I got Snoopy and made a Grindr account to look for him. Sure enough, he has an account with a photo that I recognized. He also has a Not Safe for Work album that I can't access unless we talk through the app. This isn't the first time I've caught him using Grindr. We've talked about it before. He uses it for sexting and I've told him before that I don't like it and I consider it cheating because 1. It's hidden from me. 2. These men are in close proximity. 3. He's using other people to get off so it's different than just watching entertainment. Another thing though, he was diagnosed with HSV 1 and 2 this year. He got tested by the military, he says. He's a pilot and he told me that they do testing like this, but since when did they ever test for freaking herpes? We ended up getting an $800 bill for the testing, which after asking for assistance with coverage, we only had to pay $200. This doesn't make sense to me because typically all labs done by the military is covered by the military. I don't want to believe that he has physically cheated on me, but all signs are pointing towards it. He's a very good liar, so I'm afraid that if I ask, he'll just deny ever physically cheating and I'll have no way of ever finding out the 100% truth. Sexting is something I can look past, but physical cheating is something I don't think I can ever forgive. I mean, personally I commend OP because what they're okay with goes far beyond what I would be okay with. Finding out my partner is using an app and literally sending photos and exchanging things with other people that are in close proximity would be pretty much a deal breaker for me. Honestly, with the whole they're diagnosed with HSV 1 and 2, getting stuck with the bill, that would give me also way too many red flags to say, yeah, I think this guy is physically cheating. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy tricky relationship topics, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, my boyfriend wants to rent out his flat while living in it, but I'm not comfortable with it. What should I do? I'm female 26, he's male 34, and we've been dating for one year. This man has never really had much money throughout our relationship. He had a job but always broke because he decided to pay his rent in advance and has been struggling since. I helped him several times financially. He has recently resigned from his job, just to the point where he would have been fine financially, because he found the job to be repetitive and didn't want to fall into depression. I advised against leaving this job because he doesn't have any savings whatsoever, has a kid that he sees once every two weeks, and has already been asking me for a lot of money that he was supposed to pay me back then. He didn't listen and left and has been looking for a job he may like more for a month now. He has recently said he'll rent out a room in his flat, he does not own it, for some days there and about via Airbnb to make some money. I told him it's dangerous because he would be living there with them and they're strangers. He has a son that comes now and then and he's in a relationship and I come to the house often and even find it disrespectful for him to have women in the house when I'm not there, sharing the same kitchen, living room and bathroom and it's not clean nor safe. I told him he could apply for benefits or simply find a temporary job while he looks for his dream job, but he refused and will be going forth with it. I told him I would leave the relationship because it's just too much, and he called me selfish and manipulative, but I don't think I am. Some insight would be appreciated. For background, he used to cheat in one of his previous relationships a lot, and early in hours I found him flirting with a woman online, even though we went past that. So forgive me if I'm wrong, but I feel like somebody who has the space renting out rooms is a very common thing, and I don't think living with them is too uncommon of a thing either. I mean, I completely understand if this is a boundary you are not okay with in your relationship, but I don't think what he's trying to do here is too unreasonable. My question is, is it really the sharing the living space and renting out the rooms? Or is it this guy's past behavior being the actual reason you're not okay with this? Is it just because you can't trust him? Our next story is, my 29-year-old male father, 61-year-old male, refuses to come to my wedding. I'll try to keep this brief. I'm sort of trembling with rage as we just got off the phone. My half-sister, 34-year-old female, 
and her husband owe my dad about $1,200 total for repairs and a truck he sold them five years ago. I still have a relationship with them, but he disowned both. This was following several years of my sister essentially being his other child. He has an extreme tendency to hold grudges, and this is exacerbated by his alcoholism. I invited them both to my wedding without much thought, until he started saying he wasn't going if she was. I told him, if things go that way, me and you are going to have big problems. Well, here we are. He's threatened me financially with what tiny bit he still can, phone bill and our family car insurance. He told me my life would be ruined. He turned my grandma against me and keeps telling me, it's your choice. I've explained again and again that his grudges have nothing to do with me and the only one making a choice is him. My mom agrees but he won't see reason and refuses to accept that he's turned my wedding into an explosive drama where he's the main character. He says I'm choosing them, my sister and brother-in-law, over him. Should I cut my losses and uninvite them? Should I try to get them to pay the debt? Should I just say freak it and go no contact with them? Thank you in advance. Honestly, this guy just seems to be providing an untenable situation. It doesn't seem like he wants to compromise or see anything through anybody else's eyes. And honestly, I do think at some point you just have to say, all right, enough is enough. I'm not going to put up with your stubbornness. Our next story is, should I, 24-year-old female, tell the wife I slept with her husband, 28-year-old male? This is a bit of a complicated story. I met this guy a year ago through mutual friends and we started a brief sexual relationship where we hooked up a few times for about a month. He was friends with the guys we would all go out with on weekends. I initially was told he had a wife in a different country and nothing ever happened. Over time, he started confiding in me that they were actually broken up and going through a divorce. He made me promise to not tell anybody or his friends because it was embarrassing for him. I know this is a huge red flag. I was naive and have since learned from this experience. So we started to hook up and I fully believed during this time he was single. After about a month, I found out his wife was visiting him for the weekend. I was in total shock, called him out immediately and told him he needed to confess to his wife. He told me I didn't understand and that the relationship is complicated. I was traumatized from this event. I didn't think somebody could lie like this. I went to therapy for months and it took me a long time to let go of the guilt I felt. Shortly after, I was located in another country for the last year, but I've since moved back. Last month, I went out with some of my friends and he and his wife were both there and I found out she's moving to our country for him. He introduced us and acted like nothing was wrong. I almost had a panic attack and was shaking the whole time. She invited me to her birthday party this Friday, as again, there are some mutual friends. I'm not going as I don't think it's right to see her and act like nothing happened. Should I tell the wife what happened? Her and her boyfriend are not as close with my friend group as I am, but they sometimes get invited to events. For context, I've been back for three months now, and that was the only time I've seen them so far. I can't live with knowing they might be at future events, but if I tell her, everyone is going to know I held this in for a year, and this all would likely cause serious drama. The wife moved her entire life from another country here. I also refuse to just stop seeing my actual friends because he might be there. Please, anyone, can you share advice? So, in situations like this, I've always kind of felt like if you find it easier to just ditch the whole thing, leave them all behind and not involve yourself in that drama, that's your right. But also, if you're in the situation where you might see them and that guilt is eating away at you, if you were the wife in that situation, you would want to know, right? Our next story is, should I, 42-year-old female, write my husband, 42-year-old male, of 13 years a letter about how I'm feeling, or do I need to do it face to face? We've been living separately for a few months after he had a massive anxiety spiral which led to him asking me, night after night, whether I was cheating. I wasn't, I haven't ever, I won't. Late at night, with every time feeling like I was being interrogated, you can look at my posting history for examples. This was a culmination of a couple of decades, we've been together since high school, of dealing with his anxiety. It wasn't the first time it had happened, and I knew it wouldn't be the last, so I moved out. I've been working hard in therapy to work out what I want. I don't know that I want to move back, but I don't know that I don't either. 
I don't want to keep my husband, whom I do honestly love, in limbo, his words, because I know it hurts him. I know he's doing work in therapy. He started after I left and has had maybe seven or eight sessions now to handle his anxiety better, but I still see some of the old behaviors cropping up like... When I told him I'd be working with a specific male colleague, he told me that that male colleague made him uncomfortable, he's never mentioned this before, and asked if I could work with someone else for this project. I told him that wasn't an option, and he didn't say anything else, but I feel like I can't talk about work too much, otherwise this might flare up again. It has in the past about other people I've worked with. When I took up a new hobby with a local group asking, is there anyone there I should worry about? checking in with me after my therapy sessions with multiple questions. Are you going to divorce me? Then, are you thinking about divorcing me? Then, has it crossed your mind that you want a divorce, etc.? Here's the thing. I want to address how I feel. I want to pour out my heart and tell them how complicated it all feels and how huge and how unbelievably painful it is. I have a ton of my own work to do. I've realized I've become codependent with him on his anxiety and that trying to manage his anxiety for him has taken over my life. I feel this sense of duty not to hurt him, and every time I try to talk to him about how I feel, I find myself falling back down the same rabbit hole of backing off as soon as he seems hurt and upset, so I can't seem to get all of my words out. He's left feeling alone, confused, and abandoned by someone who claims to love him. I do love him so much and I want to be with him. I want to be able to have the future we plan together. But I feel right now like I can't express what I need without being caught up in my own must not cause him pain response. And as a result, I'm just making things worse and worse. I was brought up to believe that you have to have hard conversations face to face. That to do it by any other means is cowardly. But I can't seem to have this conversation with him. I fail every single time I try, and I know it's destroying him. I can't even seem to be straightforward with him in couples therapy. I let it become all about reassuring him that I love him and that I want to move forward instead of being radically honest with him and myself. Is this something I should write out and give to him as a letter? I know based on past experience that if I do, that he's likely to pick up on particular phrases I use and repeat them later maybe in an argument or maybe just at random and i know that that's going to feel uncomfortable for me but i don't know what else to do i know that i need to address this cowardice within me with my therapist i get that but i also know that my husband deserves a wife who can be honest with him now not in a few months time i think a letter could work but i think especially maybe it should be in the confines of your couple's therapy Simply because if you're afraid of the way that he would break it down or reply to certain things, maybe having that in that kind of safe space where it can be guided a little bit by a professional would be a good thing. And not to have it in some situation where they can hold on to that letter. Another thing that came to my mind was maybe doing it through voice recording. But depending on how you would share that, that could also be as memorable and they could hold on to those quotes if that's what you're afraid about. I just hope the best for these guys because it sounds like they want it to work, it's just gonna take some time. Our next story is, boyfriend, 27 year old male, and I, 23 year old female, had some miscommunication. How to navigate? I'll not go into much details, we were in the middle of a sexual act and I was in a more vulnerable position. At one point it went wrong and he won't stop though I was struggling and used the gestures that means stop for us. I tried twice and he didn't take a notice and only stopped after he was done. After that he apologized to me and said he couldn't understand. I told him that was fine. He helped me clean up and brought some snacks for me which I didn't eat. Later in the night we hooked up again and he left for work at 7am while I was still asleep. I'm still feeling a bit weird. I told him I'm going to stay with my friend, 24 year old female, for a few days to clear my mind. He thinks I'm doing this because he's a monster and doesn't deserve me. I told him that's not the case and I forgave him. He thinks he hurt me. He's a great and caring guy. He never hurt me in any ways and it's the best relationship I ever had. I don't want to lose him. I only want some time. I hope I'm not overreacting to it. I think if you had an experience in which you find it to be particularly traumatic, it's understandable that you would want some time to try to process it and break down how you're feeling. I feel like OP's reassurances were more fueled by this guy feeling insecure or worrisome about what they did. 
Rather than necessarily being truthful, it's tricky and in no way do I fault OP, but I feel like the problem here is they've sent mixed messages where they're like, I need alone time, I need to process this, but at the same time saying, no, everything's fine, you're not a jerk, I forgave you. Our next story is, boyfriend, 24 year old male, does the opposite of complimenting me, 25 year old female. Basically, whenever I'm wearing something nice, he usually has this habit of commenting something rude in a jokingly way, and I have no idea why. Like last week, we went on a beach trip with his family and when he saw me he was like, what are you wearing? As a sarcastic way cause it was kinda revealing. Instead of telling me something nice, I mean we're on a trip, what the freak? Then he went on and made fun of a pimple that was on my face. Like dude, are you stupid? Why does he insist on bringing me down when he just saw me and that's the first thing he says? That happened many times when we would go out, usually on casual days, and immediately after I get in the car, his first questions are, what are you wearing, or you look like so and so, just basically anything sarcastic, especially if it's something revealing or attractive. It's really annoying me, and I'm starting to crave some attention. If I look nice, I want you to say something nice, it's that simple. I really struggle to understand. Does he not find me attractive anymore, but instead I look like a joke to him? Now, I could be really wrong here, but I'm kind of getting the vibe of, like, insecurity from this guy. Him saying, what are you wearing, in a sarcastic way, to me sounds like he's almost uncomfortable with you wearing that out because of eyes from somebody else. Again, I could be wrong, but that's just kind of the vibe I get from him. Like, he wants you to wear a jacket and long pants. Like, as if he wants you to wear what Billie Eilish wears on the daily. Our next story is, I, 26 year old female, and boyfriend, male 32, want a second chance at our relationship, but my parents think badly of him and won't allow it. I'm 26 year old female and he's 32 year old male. We've been dating for two months and last weekend he came to my house drunk. And we ended up arguing about him drinking while my sister and her boyfriend were over. My parents weren't there at the time. He ended up accusing me of cheating on him with my sister's boyfriend, whom was my friend first, and I introduced them to each other so he thinks we had something once in the past and obviously we didn't. The argument got a bit out of hand and he kept accusing me of it when I kept telling him the truth. I was previously in an abusive marriage that I escaped a while back, and I wasn't going to allow him to accuse me of silly stuff that wasn't true just because he was jealous of my guy friend, aka sister's boyfriend. I told him to leave, and he did leave, but I was upset and crying. My sister told my parents the next day, and they wanted an explanation. I told them a bit of what happened, and they told me he couldn't go to the house or see me ever again. I'm only living with my parents at this time because they helped me get back on my feet after my divorce. My boyfriend has consistently apologized for his behavior and regrets doing what he did. He says he won't do it again and hates that he mistreated me, but my parents refuse to let me see him or talk to him because they think he'll do the same as my ex. But I truly want to be with him and give it another chance. But they refuse to listen to me and say it's their house, their rules. He has tried to talk to them and make amends, but they insist he's no good for me. He asked me to move in with him and I'm on the fence about that because even though I do want to be with him, I feel like it's a bit too soon and want to continue getting to know him more before I make a decision like that. But my parents are refusing and making this decision for me. Should I stand up to my parents and give them another chance, or give it up even though I don't want to? Thank you. I mean ultimately if you don't want to, then don't give it up. But are they forcing you or are they strongly suggesting it based off of what they saw? I mean, two months into this relationship, they came to your house drunk, made false accusations, made a fool of himself in front of everybody, asked you to leave the safety of your parents' house. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it's hard not to see why the parents feel the way they do. Our next story is, I, female 34, ended things with friends with benefits, male 37, and I'm regretting it. This was my first time being in a friends with benefits relationship. It lasted throughout summer and we texted almost daily. Eventually, I started thinking that I wanted to change my life. New job, going to uni, and that he wasn't a part of it. So last week I was angry and I broke things off. Also I did it over the phone because he lives two hours away. To me it always seemed like he didn't care, but I was wrong. He wasn't expecting it at all and told me he only ever got the best out of me. Now I'm here thinking I made a mistake. I got used to having this type of relationship. 
Because of my anxiety, I have a hard time meeting people, and he accepted me just as I am. He also taught me not to be such a people pleaser, so maybe he's not a distraction, but someone who can help me grow. Now the question is, should I text him and try to get him back? Or is that just too desperate? Not sure he'll be too happy. I mean, the question here is, was this a friends with benefits thing? I mean, it sounds like he took this a lot more serious than that. I would say don't immediately rush into anything that you might regret jerking back and forth. If he truly does care, as long as he hasn't moved on right away to find somebody else, maybe if you give it some time and see how you really feel and what you want both right now and in the future, maybe if it does make sense, there could still be something. Our next story is, I, 42-year-old male, have reason to believe my partner, 40-year-old female, has been lying about another relationship for a year. Me, 42-year-old male, and my partner, 40-year-old female, have been together for just over a year, met on a dating app, sparks flew immediately, and it was wonderful. However, it didn't take long until some unsettling things began happening to her. Over the course of a few weeks, her neighbor slash acquaintance, I'll call him Daniel, was acting creepy towards her. It culminated in an event where he tried to force himself on her. Police were involved, he was detained, questioned, and released on bail. Shortly thereafter, he allegedly committed. It's important to note that I never saw this guy or spoke to the police. It was all based on text screenshots and what she told me. I also saw a couple of photos of Daniel she showed me before all the crazy stuff happened. Fast forward a couple of months, and we decided we wanted her to move in with me. Somewhat quickly, she met a pet sitter, I'll call him Richard, who wanted to take over her lease and the paperwork went through without issue. He purchased a large majority of her furniture, so the move was pretty streamlined and she didn't have to move in a lot of items to my house. Richard was also interested in adopting one of her three dogs as it would have been too many pets to handle with our schedules. Because Richard adopted her dog, they have kept in somewhat loose communication. He would update her with pictures of the dog, etc. As months went on, he wanted to spend more time with her but when I asked if I could meet him, Richard allegedly said he didn't want to meet me. Eventually, he admitted he had some feelings for her but she told him she was not interested and that she was with me. I told her that I was sketched out by his attitude and that I would appreciate at least meeting her friends. She agreed and reduced her communication with Richard to a bare minimum. No more hangouts, etc. This past weekend, I had a bombshell dropped on me. I was cleaning the house and found an Amazon box in our closet that had the full name of Daniel, the deceased neighbor, on it, but listed her former address and phone number. I decided to google his name because we were always suspicious if he did, in fact, do what he did. What I found blew my mind. I came across a Facebook page with his photo, which I remembered his face from the old photo she showed me, but then I discovered that his friends and family had a parent whose name I'd heard of before from my partner. Upon viewing his parents' Facebook page, I saw photos dating back several years of my partner and Daniel posing together in family photos, clearly a couple. To top it all off, there was also a very recent photo of my partner's former dog, name included with the photo, leading me to believe that not only was her neighbor, Daniel, seemingly a long-term partner, but Richard, who rented her apartment and took the dog, was the same person. I've saved screenshots of all the evidence I have, but I've been sitting on it for a few days until I can approach this with a clear, logical mind. It's a lot of lies to untangle. Assault? Ending things? All possibly made up? And I don't know where to begin, or how to approach her with this information. Should I ask her for the truth before showing her evidence, or just throw the evidence at her and see how she reacts? It might sound naive, but part of me wants to give her an opportunity to explain herself. Or should I just end the relationship without even bringing it up? Is there any scenario where her actions could be justified? Perhaps he's dangerous? I just want to be sure all my bases are covered before I pull the trigger on this. I'm not gonna lie, this is crazy. And honestly, I feel like whatever the truth may be, it's not worth that amount of drama. I don't think OP's necessarily angling this in a way where they think the relationship is going to continue forward. But yeah, there's definitely no way you could recover from this. How do you approach it? Honestly, I would start like protecting the things you hold dear and end it however you see best. Our next story is, 
I, 18 year old female, feel like I am tainted in a way because of my boyfriend, 19 year old male of one year relationship. If things ever didn't work out, I would feel like it's wrong for me to ever be with someone else. I'm currently in my first relationship and it's the first time I experienced anything. Mostly it's the sexual parts that bother me. After I already did things with my man, if things ever didn't work out, it would feel weird to ever do it with someone else. I feel like I've been too sexual already in my current relationship or something. Almost I feel dirty but not because I understand it's normal etc. This could possibly be because of the family I come from. Very judgmental and strict on women etc. Traditional? Has anyone else felt this way? I in no way judge other women for this. In fact I've never had these thoughts until recently. I've been with my boyfriend since I was 15. I'm now 18 and I just think of all the sexual moments sometimes and I imagine it would feel weird to be with another. I would probably feel like I'm hiding some secret from him because I already did some sexual things with another, my current boyfriend. I'm speaking as if we ever didn't work out. I probably am only having these thoughts because we're having a rough patch, but it's also made me realize this is a real issue for me. I'm not interested in others. If we ever broke up, I don't think I'd get it with anyone else. But I feel like if I did, I feel like I'm tainted in a way. I feel like I'd have the urge to tell him everything sexual from my previous relationship. So let me just say, once you get past the age of 18, it almost becomes expected that when you get in a relationship, your other partner has had some level of experience. Honestly, I think this is just one of those first time relationship things you have to get past if this relationship doesn't work out. I also personally think that this has a way of kind of resolving itself. As in, if you find yourself single and you find somebody that you are interested in, I think your mind has a way of very quickly making it not a problem. Or at least not as much of a problem as you thought it would be. Especially if, you know, they don't care like most adults should. This next story is, I, 31 year old female, don't think my husband's 30 year old male expectations for how we'll contribute to buying a house are fair. Am I way off base? My husband and I have had mostly separate finances for our entire around 8 year relationship, married too. We split rent on percentages based on our income, have separate retirements and investment accounts, but both contribute to a joint account for fun and dates when we're both employed. I have 100% P&T disability from the VA and have cycled through jobs ranging from gig work to freelancing to W-2 employment as we move around for his job. He is active duty military. We have one 14 month old baby and I haven't been back to work since she was about 3 months old. Well recently I found out that he was actively misrepresenting his current salary and BAH rates to me. I have yet to bring it up but I imagine this started as a conservative estimate that slowly became wholly inaccurate. These rates are available online and are easily accessible by anyone. So I genuinely don't think I'd ever bother to double check his word. He has some trauma and anxiety around money stemming from his upbringing, so it's not super surprising. I then asked him for a summary of his assets while applying for a pre-approval letter and he told me he had nothing, which I knew was an outright lie. He eventually gave me a number but I have no way of knowing how accurate it is. In any case, we tentatively backed off buying until recently when we happened to find a listing we both really liked. While running estimates for our monthly payments, he made the comment that I would need to pay for everything over his BAH, location based housing allowance. I didn't respond right away but I find this extremely imbalanced. His BAH is a payment he receives on top of his salary and other payments and allowances. His salary before his BAH is 50 to 60% more than my disability and our next station is extremely rural and has quite literally no job prospects that would pay more than childcare would cost, so I'll be unable to work unless I can find a flexible work from home option. I feel he's essentially asking me to put in several hundred dollars of my actual income towards housing while he gets to keep all of his. I'm also putting up around 8% of the total purchase cost as a down payment. He hasn't committed to contributing to the down payment. We don't need one for a VA loan as he's just purchased a Tesla and says he doesn't know what he'll be getting for selling his old car yet. I want to come back and tell him that the BAH should go to housing and anything over that should be split according to our income like we did for rent in the past. But I need a reality check. Is this reasonable? Am I way off base here? 
If I'm not, how can I approach this as gently as possible? I did cut a bunch of context about his financial trauma and anxiety that I can add in the comments if it feels necessary, but suffice to say we are both aware he has these issues and I think it comes from a place of fear or need to feel stability as opposed to a desire to control or mislead me. Honestly, if he's feeling comfortable enough to go and buy a Tesla, I wouldn't feel too bad about bringing it up and admitting that you know there's this imbalance here. I think you either keep quiet and you let it continue building up and being bigger and bigger of an issue, or you at least try to tackle it. Trauma or anxiety aside, they're clearly doing well enough if they're going and purchasing something like a Tesla. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another tricky relationship topic, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.